How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. Welcome basketball fans to another exciting season of basketball right here on Redeemer Radio. Your announcers, Kenny Barr and Bob Mers, are ready to bring you all the action of tonight's games. Turn up the dial, sit back, and relax. Redeemer Radio has your courtside seats ready. Gotta love this game. Hey, Kenny Barr, Bob Mers, and we just sent Rich to the concession stand to get some water. We're wait wait till we get hungry, Kenny. He's oh. going to be busy all night. <laughs> I better get some case out. That was sneaky. Hey, we're at Bishop Winger High School tonight, bringing you a Tuesday night edition, a non-conference game between the 9-5 and five Bishop Winger Saints and the 5-9 and nine Fort Wayne Canterbury Cavaliers. One of the few years that Canterbury isn't excuse me, really tearing everything up. And uh, this is going to be an interesting game, Bob, because uh, Dwinger is on a roll uh, at 9-5. and five. Well, they've uh, split the last two or three games that they've had. And uh, Canterbury's struggling a little bit. They're still playing a lot of good teams, Kenny, and that has always been their philosophy. When Scott Krieger was, was at Canterbury and all the coaches uh, that followed Scott, he's uh, always done the same thing. He's always played excellent teams. And back when they were 1-2A, and two A, they played 3A, 4A, 5A, that when the tournament came, they were so used to playing tougher teams that made them tough, and Canterbury has always been very good in the tournament. But this year, as you mentioned, they're struggling, but uh, everybody has their ups and downs, and right now they're down a little bit. They won't be down very long. No, I don't believe they will. It's going to be an interesting game tonight to see how the Dwinger Saints handle the Cavaliers in their normal up-tempo style. I don't know if they're still playing that or not. Hey, if you can hear this game, it's thanks to our communication sponsor, Dr. Todd and Mrs. Mary Briscoe and the Briscoe Family Dentistry. Their generous financial support helps make this Redeemer Radio Sports broadcast possible. You need emergency dental care? I hope not, because that hurts. But if you do, call Dr. Briscoe at 260-486-9950. That's 260-486-9950. And let's go to our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. As we gather in your name, O Lord, there are so many things for which we are grateful for. You have created us in your image and likeness, and you have filled us with gifts and talents and abilities. We thank you for the gifts that you have bestowed upon these athletes, their coaches, their parents, and their supporters. We ask you to bless this contest in which we show forth the beauty of creation by using our talents wisely. Help us always to use them for your greater honor and glory in a spirit of fairness and competition so that this game may truly be a way of bringing to the world an awareness of you who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Redeemer Radio has one travel sponsor, and that is h and Electric, specializing in commercial need, electrical needs for the business community. h and Electric can handle the smallest to the largest of projects for your business. Call Pete Henry, 260-357-0123. That's 260-357-0123. And if we've timed this right, Bob? Look at some of the statistics, Kenny. Uh, we will do that after we do our national anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God our Father, you have created us to strive for the best. Grant to all athletes, coaches, and fans strength to pursue excellence during this event, and in all that we do for the glory of God. We pray for the safety of these athletes, protect them from injury and harm, and finally, we pray for your grace that you would provide us with the endurance to pursue our heavenly prize, eternal life in your Son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. The privilege of this game was made possible by those who have served and continue to serve for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us honor and respect our efforts and our country as we proudly play.
and they will be announcing the starting lineup here shortly, but our crack research team have already snuck over and got the starting lineup. And uh, which one would you like to take, Bob? You want to take the good guys or the, the visitors? You take one, I'll take the other one, Kenny. Well, the Canterbury Cavaliers uh, are starting a freshman, actually, Elena Rogers. She's a five foot eleven freshman. She's going to listed it as a forward. We'll see. Probably a swing player would be my guess. Madison Van Hooten. Bob tells me she is the glue that holds this team together. She's a junior, stands about five foot eight. They list her as a guard. Sydney Hearn, a front line player. She's a sophomore, stands five foot eight. And uh, yeah, she's a, listed as a front line player and forward. Alexis, we're going to. Oh, I was going to cheat and get the, the pronunciation of it. We're going to say Habig, but we're not completely sure if it's Habig or Habig. We'll get that for you. She's a senior, five foot nine. Oh, I just like missed her altogether. Okay, and then Claire Rorick, a senior, five foot nine, forward, rounds out the starting lineup. So we got Rangos, Van Hooten, Hearn, Habig, and Rorick for the Canterbury Cavaliers. And Bob's got the Lady Saints from Bishop Dwinger High School. Bishop Dwinger Saints, Kenny, they're averaging 59 and a half points and a game. They're giving up 48.3. That one guard, number four, Madison Reed, 5'6", senior. Her sister, Claudia Reed, 5'4", sophomore. Center, Josie Kochman, 6'2", junior. One of the forwards, Ellen Ross, a 5'11", sophomore. And the leading scorer and one of the better players in the entire area, Kaya Andrews, a 5'9 senior. Also, on uh, Canterbury Kenny, they're averaging 50 points a game and giving up 53. So, uh, Wenger averages about nine points uh, more on offense, and they give up about five points less. So, this could be a good ball game. And, you know, uh, with the tournament and uh, with the girls' basketball starting so much earlier now, uh, there's not too many more games until the tournament. So a lot of these teams, and especially Coach uh, John Beckman and Canterbury Cavaliers, will want to start getting a lot better and get tuned up for the sectionals. And this could very well be a matchup in the sectionals because they are both 3A now. Canterbury's success is bumping from 1A to 2A to 3A. And they're both in section 22. So we may uh, be doing this matchup again a little bit later in the year. Our first quarter sponsor, you can help support your Catholic parish or school and help yourself in the process with Notre Dame's Federal Credit Union Elevate Program. <laughs> Call Elevate at 844-230-6611 or you can visit them online at ndelevate.com to learn more. The teams are hitting the floor and uh, from our vantage point, I'm going to stand up and we will get a better view and we will get this thing started. Colquhoun in Rangos. Boy, the gym went suddenly silent. like a golf match around here quickly, is not it? Rangos is the tallest player for Canterbury at 5'11", and uh, the tallest player for uh, Bishop Dwenger is Josie Kochman at 6'2". Andrews controls the tip, drives the baseline, puts it up, almost blocked from behind. She just powered right through it, put it up and in. Easy two points for the Bishop Dwenger Saints, and they're going to get the ball back right away because they flipped it into Van Hooten, and she traveled with the basketball. So the first bucket and the first turnover already recorded in the books. And Madison flips it to Claudia. This is gonna, I'll get used to it. We got two ream girls on the floor at the same time here. Swings over the left side to Andrew. She's about five foot left wing outside the arc. Madison, Claudia, Claudia's down in the right corner. People aren't moving, now they're starting to go. Ross comes through the lane. They decide not to give it to her. Andrews outside the shell right wing. Directing a little bit of traffic, trying to get somebody to the top of the key. They do. Madison, or excuse me, Claudia to Madison. Inside to Ross. Ross going to try and get inside the lane. No room, so she kicks it back out to Andrews. Andrews drives the baseline, split, spins inside the lane, gets it to Ross, right toe, short. Andrews, the rebound, puts it on the floor, back up and in. Count it. 4 nothing. 7 7-0-7. Early, early here tonight at Bishop Winger High School. Kenny, I was going to mention Taya Andrews. As she goes, so does the Lady Saints. And right now, she's starting off well, and so is Dwinger. Van Houten going to go all the way around the shelf, drops it off, a three-pointer on the way. It's no good. Rebound Ross. Nope, fought for it. Flipped that bounds. It's going to go to the Bishop Dwinger Saints. It's Sidney Hearn kind of snuck in the back door on Ross and popped it out of her hands and created the stoppage of play. Claudia Ring brings it over the timeline, flings it to the right side to Madison, back to Claudia, top of the key. Gets it inside to Ross. She puts it up. No good. Chases her own rebound down. Uh, a lot of hands on it. Finally, comes out of there with uh, Canterbury with the basketball. Van Hooten 
Closely guarded by Ream, Madison. Van Houten trying to dribble around the shell. A little quick pitch and catch. She's got it back, drives the lane, goes up, bodies up, Colkman, no foul, rebound, Andrews. Andrews hustling down the floor. She's got two beat, three, four beat. She can get in there. Oh, lost control of the ball. It rolls out of bounds. Stays Bishop Dwinger's direction. Early in the game, Kenny, both baskets from Taya Andrews, both rebounds from Taya Andrews. I thought she was going to get one there, too, because she got in the lane, got in pretty deep. But the Saints trigger it in, into Ross, up and in. So things are pretty easy early here for the Lady Saints. As the Cavaliers bring it over the timeline on the left side. Havig has the basketball, kicks it over to Van Hooten. Van Hooten holds it in the triple threat position, looks for a pick. She goes the opposite direction of the pick, tries to drive the lane, stops, pops a three. It's no good. Rebound fought for Ross. Finally muscles out of there. Oh, almost. She spun into Sydney Hearn. Sydney got her hands on it. And they're going to call foul on Canterbury. First foul of the ball game. And, of course, the first foul on Sydney Hearn. So, Claudia Ream running the point here this evening for the Lady Saints. Over to Madison, right wing. She finds Ross inside, kicks it out to Colkman. Colkman drives the baseline, puts it up. It's a little bit short. Ross with a rebound. Up and count it. And the foul. So the old-fashioned three-point play, and the guilty Cavalier is going to be Claire Rorick, her first foul of the ball game, and the second foul called on the Cavaliers. Part of the problems for uh, Canterbury right now, they've been out-rebounded 4-1. to one. And now outscored 9 to nothing as the Saints having their way offensively. Van Houten brings the ball down, a couple of spin moves, trying to make something happen. Still has the basketball, finally flings it at the top to Rongos. Rongo's kind of doing the same thing. She got out of control, traveled with the basketball, and the Saints are going to get it again with a 9-0 lead at 5-22 here in the first. The coaching staff of Canterbury sitting right in front of us. This is not the start they wanted right now, Kenny. No, I don't think anybody would want to go in a 9-0 hole to begin with. So Claudia flips it to Madison, back to Claudia, top of the key, looking for somebody, gives it back to Madison. Ross, left toe, up, no good. Rebound pulled out of the way, Canterbury. Hearn, she's an active ball player down low. Gets to Van Houten. She hustles and gets her pocket picked by Claudia Ream. Claudia's well, she's get in quick, isn't she? Tried to drop past to Andrews. Andrews recovers, puts it up, no good. Ross rebound, up, no good. Ross rebound again. This one goes way up. And on top of the backboard, so that one won't count anyway. But a foul is called on that last offensive rebound. And that will go against At the line, shooting to Ross. Alexis Habig. That's her first of the ball game, so there's three fouls now against the Cavaliers. And Ross makes her first free throw, so the Saints into double digits. Well, the Cavaliers still have a goose egg on the board. Ellen Ross has six points, three rebounds, and two out of two from the foul line. Make it three out of three, and that one rotates nicely. Because she's been practicing her free throw, she looks really, really comfortable up there today. What a start for Bishop Dreger. Coach Cleveland Inch has got to be happy with this 11-0 start. Habig with a basketball. Tries to dump it down low. Intercepted by Colkman. And she gets a hit to Claudia Ream. Claudia gets it down on the corner to Madison. Madison just inside the arc. Count it. Canterbury might need a timeout, Kenny. It's starting to unravel real quick. 13 to nothing. And quickly they get it on the floor, but the defense also just as hard. Van Houten loses control of it. And they're going to say a foul this time probably on Madison Ream would be my guess on a reach in. And Miss Van Houten is just trying to do everything. And uh, it's really struggling in the offensive end for the Cavaliers. They get it into her. She's out in between the circles. Driving to her right. Gets double. The, the help side comes up. Shot was good, but I think she was fouled on the floor. That might be two on Madison Ream. Two in about 30 seconds. And you're exactly right, Bob. Second foul of the ball game against the Saints and both of them against number four, Madison Ream. And here comes her substitute toward the board. Van Houten puts up a three. No good. Rebound lost out of bounds. They point to the direction of the Saints. And our first change of the ball game. Heather Nellum will come in for Madison Ream. And we're going to take a 30-second break because there's timeout on the floor. You are listening to 106.3 FM WRDF. Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Welcome home to your family of faith. 
Are you looking for an orthopedic specialist? Ortho Northeast has been serving the community for over 50 years with offices in three convenient locations. Look for the location nearest you. Dr. John Pritchard is a board-certified orthopedic surgeon with 20 years of experience with OME and can assist you with the best treatment plan for your knee or shoulder pain. Dr. John Pritchard is looking forward to meeting you and helping with all orthopedic needs. Call Dr. Pritchard at 260-484-8551 or visit the web at www.orthone.com. Eisman Property Management is our uh, first quarter sponsor. They're a local company that offers their services for residential properties from a single home to large complexes. If you're a property owner needing a full-time maintenance staff to care for your property or you just need to find a rental home, Eisman Property Management is here to help you. Contact Eisman Property Management on the web at 456rent.com or call 456-RENT. That's 456-7368. Jada Smith in the ball game now for the Bishop Gringer Saints. She gets it inside to Ross. Ross throws up kind of a wild thing. Rebound Andrews up and in. So 15 to nothing to score. Looks like a little bit of a football score here so far. And the Cavaliers are getting badgered defensively as Smith gets out there. And boy, she's a hustler. We've done a couple of games for the ladies and uh, she's impressed us greatly as a freshman. Cavaliers playing with a little more sense of urgency, but uh, so are the Bishop Springer Saints on the defensive side of the ball. Smith gets it and she's on the floor. Looks like a hot potato. Nobody's really getting a good handle on it. And I think they finally called it a, a foul over the top on Habe. That's her second of the ball game and a fourth called on the Cavaliers. Well, Five turnovers, Kenny, already on top of everything else. That's really complicating matters with five turnovers for Canterbury, and they did not even have a point yet. Smith with a spin move in the lane, up and in. Not much of a defensive uh, slow down at all. Van Houten drives, puts it up. Bookman slaps it out of bounds as a nice block. Van Houten hits the floor, and the ball is going to stay down on that end of the where the Cavaliers are triggered out from underneath their own basket. 17 to nothing to score. The Saints enjoying a great start here in the first quarter. That's Josie Kochman's second block already. Basketball out on the left wing, just outside the arc. They get it into the free throw line. Rorick has it, trying to find somebody to dump it off to. Rongos comes around, takes it. Now Rorick, eight footer, off the rim, tip, tip. Rorick's got her own rebound, kicks it outside to Rongos. Rongos Goes baseline, the defense cut her off there. She finds Hearn, Hearn throws one up. Whistle will stop play, and two shots coming for the Canterbury Cavaliers. An opportunity to get that goose egg and off the board. <laughs> Guilty of the first and foul, Taya Andrews, her first to the ball game, and that is the third against the Lady Saints here in their home floor. Knuckleball, no good. So 2.42 on the clock, first period action. 17-0 the Saints. And Rose Tippman comes into the ball game. She will spell Ellen Ross, who's been doing some heavy-duty work down inside the lane and the glass work. She has seven points, Kenny, and Taya Andrews has six points. And the Sydney Hurd makes her second free throw. So got that goose egg off the board, 17-1 to 1 at 235, and the Saints have the rock. Get it down to the baseline, left baseline to Colkman. Colkman didn't want to do much with it, so she finds Andrews. Andrews going to drive right back to the same spot Colkman was, and she is fouled on the way in. We're going to call that one on Van Houten. I think that's her first of the ball game, Bob. So a non-shooting foul. They're going to trigger it out from underneath their own basket to get it into Colkman. Colkman to Smith. Smith to Andrews. Andrews, she'll let her fly. It's way short. Gets tipped out. Smith grabs it. Puts a head fake on the defender, but uh, the defender did not bite, so she's going to fling it out to the top of the key and around the shell. Andrews, left toe, steps inside the lane. Nice pass. Drop pass to Colkman. Colkman might have... Yeah, camped out in there a little bit. Three seconds to call. So Casey got a little bit lazy with the feet and the turnover. Ball goes back to Can Canterbury. And the Bishop Winger Saints, a little bit of a press. I'm not exactly sure why. We get it to Rongos. Rongos brings it over the timeline. Swing it over to Habig. Habig over to Van Houten. Van Houten has to rescue the basketball, and she is bumped and fouled by Heather Nello of the Saints. That is the fourth foul of the ball game against the Saints, and Heather's first. And Madison Ream comes back into the lineup. She will spell Heather. I can imagine, Kenny, that the uh, emphasis was to slow down uh, 
Mason Van Hooten. And uh, of course, uh, Cleveland Inge has got his girls all over her. They're blanketing Van Hooten right now. And Van Hooten has the basketball. She doesn't get any good looks. She finally flings it to the left side. Three on the way. Ooh, <laughs> wide right. Didn't hit anything. And uh, easy, easy turnover for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Canterbury averages 50 points a game, but we've played almost seven minutes, and they have one point. Olivia Sturba checks into the scorer's table. She'll come in at the next break, and it looks like it's going to be now because Smith lost it out of bounds, but it was tipped by a Cavalier. And Caitlin Ryan also checking into the lineup. Kochman and Andrew is going to take a break here the last 131 of the first quarter. 17-1 your score. The Saints enjoying a 16-point lead here early. Three on the way. Lined up just a little bit long at the back of the iron. Rebound Canterbury. Canterbury gets it to Van Hooten. Van Hooten, good-looking athlete, but she's just got to have a little bit of help. She uh, carried the basketball. No, they called a jump ball. As I think Smith or Reeve got a hand on it. Slowed her down a little bit. The possession arrow is... Apparently goes to Canterbury. Again, Dwenger is emphasizing slow down Van Hooten. Now the old hit the player to back trick. Got the ball in. Easy two-footer, and they missed it. Rebound went to Dwenger. Long pass down the floor is tipped out of bounds. So it's a quiet gym. I can hear Cleveland giving instructions right through the headphones. And he's not too mad, but that was a, a play that should never happen to anybody defensively. The crowd's awful quiet tonight. Yeah, they're, is, they're as quiet as, as it's cold outside. I think we're either in mass or we're, uh, we're at a golf match. I'm not sure. We're at a library, perhaps. Steal on the floor as Canterbury takes the basketball away. They give it to Van Hooten. She's one on three, but she's so frustrated. Good move. She's just going to go charging in there, puts it up and in. That's what Count she it. does. Count it for the Cavaliers, 19 to 3. Now your score is Jada Smith. Brings over the timeline, 44 seconds, and she's going to just stand out there and dribble because they've given her enough space where they're not even a five-second count starting. Now they come up a little bit closer, so Smith does a crossover dribble. Van Hooten takes it right away from her. But the defense on their toes. Van Hooten's got a one-on-three, and she drinks, decides to bring it back and then go right back in amongst the trees, puts it up, no good, rebound winger. We're going the other way with 21 seconds to go. And Smith does the same thing. Stops over in front of us. Now throws it across court to Madison Reeve. Reeve gets it inside. Shot put up. Foul on the play. Basket did not go as Rose Tipman had a pretty good look at the, at the iron that time. She got hacked pretty well as uh, Bishop Dwenger's uh, second yeah, unit is playing very well. Good oh. team basketball. And right now it's all Bishop Dwenger Ladies Saints 17-3. to Shot up and good. Make it 18-3. to didn't I see a 19 on that board earlier? I thought I so I, too because I that's I why I, that's why I went I, I went twice on my uh, scorebook. Second free throw is missed. Rebound Canterbury. Eight seconds ago they got to get it down the floor in a hurry. Ron goes find somebody in the corner. Decides not to take the three. Find Van Hooten down low. Beautiful pass. So, Beautiful <laughs> pass. And there's what happened. They just gave that basket to Bishop Winger too. So it's 18 to five, and the end of the first quarter. So we will take a one minute break. And you are listening to WRDF 106.3 FM, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Hello, I'm Tom Steele with Tom Steele Tire and Auto Repair, a family-owned business for over 35 years. We carry all major brands of new tires as well as a large selection of quality used tires to save you money. We do all types of auto repairs, be it brakes, alignment, or just fix your air conditioning. Tom Steel Tire, North Clinton or Illinois Road. Give us a try. You'll be glad you did. Whether you fly a plane through the clouds or bake cookies with your kids, we want to give you more time to do what you love. Hi, this is Lisa Stoffer from First Federal Bank. Our checking accounts with online and mobile banking options let you do just that. Whether you're in the air or on the ground, ask us how you can get up to $150 when you open a new checking account and take advantage of these banking options. First Federal Bank, better together. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Bishop Winger High School, and our second quarter sponsor is Holy Cross College. They're proud to bring you the second quarter of tonight's game. Holy Cross College is an affordable Catholic college offering a life-changing, life-affirming education and is closer than you think, just two hours away. 
Took for them on the line, but Holy Cross College at Notre Dame IN. Andrews in the lane, bucket for the Saints. Starts off the second quarter. Giving us a 20 to 5 lead. Van Hooten down the lane, gonna do it all herself. Puts it up, no good rebound. Pulled out of there by Ross. Ross finds Andrews. Looks like the Saints gonna run a little bit. Andrews up and in, count it. She split the defenders down the lane. 22 to 5. Taya Andrews has 10 points already, and it's 22 to 5, as Kenny mentioned. Uh, a tough night for Canterbury. Rongos travels with the basketball as she kind of lined up, eyeballed the iron, but the whistle stopped her from even kind of loading the gun completely. Lineup change for the Canterbury Cavaliers. Megan Thomas, a five foot nine sophomore, going to check into the lineup. Can, he, can, can we compare uh, the shooting of Canterbury to the weather? Both is very cold tonight, and Canterbury is very cold. Very accurate analogy. They have two baskets in the entire uh, first quarter, and they're both from Van Hooten. Smith kicks it out to Madison Ream. Wham! Four. That must have been a four pointer. She threw that from downtown. Three pointer from Madison. 25 5 your score. Van Hooten to Rongos. Rongos for a three. Oh, that was a good looking Count shot. It. She got her feet set and her shoulder square. And the Saints tried to throw it over the top. It went right through Casey Polkman's hand. Casey. Oh, I knew I'd do that. I'm sorry. Josie Polkman's hand. Casey's been coaching football here a long time, and I've known him forever. And his daughter's now playing for Bishop Gwinger Saints. So please forgive me on that one. Rongos tries to drive the lane. She's cut off, dumps it off to Hearn. Hearn gives it on the weave to Van Hooten. Van Hooten loses control of it, so she has to get get a handle back on the basketball in between the circles. They're going to try a three from the right side. Count it as Alexis Habig. Now the Cavaliers are heard from. Bob, they must have got tired of you uh, picking on over there. Kenny, to they, they got two bit. baskets this quarter, and they're both threes, so they're trying to shoot themselves right back in this game. They try to dump it inside to Colkman, and she is triple team. Ball's taken away. Here comes Canterbury down the floor. Van Hooten got one person beat. Oh, smack Ross right in the face of the Novo. No call. Lost the ball anyway. Ross has it back. I bet she's going to look for somebody and then take her out. Nope. Gets to Colkman. Colkman gets bumped on the way down to the baseline. But, boy, Ellen Ross just took one to the right cheek that might leave a bruise. It was a kind of a loss to dribble, and the elbow went up and got her. No, I'm glad I don't play this game anymore. We're one and one now. As that's the seventh foul on the Canterbury Cavaliers. So, Josie Colkman. 6'2", Junior. Oh, and uh, I think it was a lane violation. Joe's got somebody got in there a little bit too early for the Saints. So they pointed the other way. The shot was no good. Wouldn't have counted if it was good. So here comes Canterbury. Maybe going to bring the basketball over the timeline. It's going to go to her left and her right. Started to get in the lane that the defense closed down, so he gives it over to Van Hooten. Van Hooten changes hands, goes to the left side, gets her pocket pick, gets out of, rolls into a Canterbury hand. They get inside the lane, kick it back out. Sometimes they get into that eight-foot section, Bob. I'm surprised they don't shoot the thing. Hand off to Hearn. Hearn finds Van Hooten. Van Hooten drives the baseline. And Colkman slaps that one out of bounds again. And Van Hooten hits the floor again. That's her third foul. Josie Colkman does a very good job with her size. Uh, very athletic. Good volleyball player this year. And she's uh, doing a very good job on defense right now. Canterbury takes it out underneath their own basket. Gets to Van Hooten. Madison Ream is all over her like a cheap suit. And she turns the basketball over. No, we're going to call a foul off the ball. I think it was an illegal uh, screen. We've seen that a, a lot this year. Sydney Hearn guilty of the personal foul. That's the eighth foul on Canterbury. And that is a non-shooting foul, foul, player control foul down on the far end. We've got a little bit of a player timeout here. I believe a little blood timeout. It looked like a scratch on a wrist, actually. Alexis Habig, who has uh, hit a three just a few minutes ago. A little medical attention from the trainers here at Bishop Gwinger High School. 25-11, your score, 5-19 and counting. Smith gets the ball to Madison Ream in the corner. She's hit a couple threes from there. Back to Smith. Andrews, left wing, three on the way. Count it. This is Kaya Andrews' night, Kenny. 13 points already. 
Bronco is going to bring the basketball down the floor on the right side. She's going to go to the top of the key, picks it up with no place to go. Somebody comes and helps her with the basketball. She tries to get in the lane, but the defense just collapses, and they just don't even let them in the paint. Back to Van Hooten. Van Hooten tries to get in the paint. She gets in there, and guess what? That's a fourth block by uh, Josie Cope. Again. We're having a block party here. Loose ball. Rorick picks it up for Canterbury. Shot up. No good. Rebound Ross. She's fouled on the back side of the rebound. So Josie Coltman struggling on the offensive end and making it up for it on the defensive end. A 6'2 junior. She's using that tall frame. Four or five blocks. And the thing that's a little different from last year, Kenny, sometimes she would slap down on the basketball. This year, she's not drawing the foul so much when she blocks the shot. And that's really helping her and Dwinger. Ellen Ross to the free throw line. Makes her third free throw of the night, I believe. Looks comfortable up there. 29-11 your score. 440 here. Second quarter action. From Bishop Dwinger High School, the Bishop Dwinger Saints, and the Lady Cavaliers of Canterbury High School. Nine points for Ellen Ross. Second free throw is good. 30-11 your score. So a 19-point lead for the Lady Saints. Van Newton with the basketball. <laughs> She's got pushed, no call. Finally gives it up. And they're going to get it back to the right corner. No, they're going to stay up top. He Rongos with the basketball. Stopped at the free throw line. Decides, I like this angle. Throws it up. No good. Andrews pulls down the rebound. Here everybody heads to our right. Gets it down quickly to Madison Ream. Back to Smith. Ream in the left corner. This handles it. She's going to throw it way over the top to Andrews. Andrews drives into the lane. Runs into her own player and is called for traveling. She wanted to drive the lane and Josie Kochman moved over to try to uh, set a pick. That just didn't work that time. You know, they kind of ran into each other there. We got a timeout on the floor? Yes, we do. So let's take a 30 second break ourselves as the Canterbury Cavaliers take a timeout. And you are listening to 106.3 FM, WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Matthew F. Hatfield, a health insurance specialist for those age 65 and older, and for those under age 65 receiving Social Security disability. Matt provides Medicare supplement plans, Medicare Part D prescription drug plans, Medicare Advantage plans, dental, vision, and hearing aid insurance plans, and long-term care insurance plans. For taking good care during the best years of your life, call Matthew F. Hatfield at 484-6606. And we're back at Bishop Winger High School. 4.05 to go in the second quarter. 30 to 19. The Saints cruising along with a 19-point lead. 30 to 11. The Saints have a 19-point lead. Kenny, they, Dwinger averages 59 and a half points a game, and they are they have 30 at and it's still not even half time. So Dwinger's could score 60-70 tonight if they want to. Long pass to Van Hooten, cut off by Ross, ends up giving up to Rongo. Rongo drives the lane, kicks it out to the left side, three on the way, count it as Alexa Habig. That's her second or third three. Her second three, and she's red hot. Dwenger's gonna have to uh, work on her. They're, they're emphasizing stopping Van Hooten, but the, the other girls from Canterbury are taking advantage of that. You get it down the left blocks, the right blocks. Oh, good. Me, to Ross, she kicks it to Colkman. Colkman gets it back to Ross, puts it up and in. So Ross doing a little more lane work. Van Houten charges it down the floor. It's one on four. She wisely decides to back out. Now she drives the baseline. Ran into Colkman, says, I'm not doing that again. Gives up the basketball to Rongos. Rongos to Habig. Habig holds it over her head and decides to hand it off to Van Hooten, Van Hooten drives in. Oh, nice move. And Another block. by Andrews, re- that picked off by Canterbury, and Hearn grabbed the loose bucket from the ball and put it up. 32-16, your score. We're right at the three-minute mark, second quarter. That's Sydney Hearn's fourth rebound for Canterbury. She's doing a good job on the boards. Andrews with the basketball, drives the baseline, gets around the defense, puts it up and in. Not much of a challenge that time by Claire Rorick down on the baseline. For the Cavaliers, 34-16 your score. Rongos, a spin move, hands it off to Hearn. Hearn kind of looks up, and crossover dribble, says, okay, I'll jack this one up. Way short, and the ball's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Bishop Dwinger's basketball. And I think there's going to be a little bit of coaching real quick here. As you can hear, it's a quiet gym tonight, unfortunately, so you hear all the background noise, including Bob and I probably breathing and some other things that we shouldn't really be doing out loud. Ty Andrews has 15 points for Bishop Dwenger. The basketball into Rose Tittman. She turns, puts it up, put it up too hard. Ball rolls out of bounds on the rebound. It's going to stay Bishop Dwenger's way. Rose had some seriously deep position down on the inside block. 
way in the low post. Canterbury's not doing a real good job at inside post defense at all. Andrews puts up a three. It's no good. Rorick Canterbury pulls it out of there. Gets it forward to Habig. Habig over to Rongos. Rongos buried in the right corner. Dribbles out. She gets out to the right toe. Stops, picks it up. Looks for somebody to give it up to. It's Hearn. Hearn finds Rorick. Rorick stands at the free throw line. Wants to give it back away. Just gets it to Hearn. Hearn will jack it up from out there. Decides to go around the defense. Does a nice job. Got around both Andrews and Coltman. Put up with the left hand. She has five points, four rebounds in the leading rebounder and scorer right now. And they found Madison Green early, and she put it up in an easy three, stole the inbound pass, put it up, and she is fouled. So Madison Green snuck in behind the defense or behind the offense a little bit and took the inbound pass away. But she was too far under the iron to really do much with it. But that's her third three from the exact same spot on the floor. So it's 37-18 and possibly 38, depending on where this goes. That one goes in. 38, 18. Nine points for Madison Ream and Coach Cleveland Inge is going to his second unit and they're playing very well tonight also. Caitlin Ryan and Olivia Sturba both check into the lineup. The second free throw on the way and count it. 39 to 18 and another change in the lineup. This one, Megan Thomas checks in for Sidney Hearn for the Cavaliers. And the Bishop Dwinger Saints are going to put on a little bit of a full court press with a 21 point lead and 152 here in the second quarter. Madison Ream is going to try to stop Miss Van Houten. It's a token press as Van Houten just dribbles right through it. She puts it up and her shot is blocked that time by Olivia Sturba. And it rolls out of bounds, but it's going to stay Cavaliers way. But Olivia kept, stood her ground and did a nice job by not fouling and just blocking the shot. Dwinger's good at, done a good job stopping Van Houten all night. Van Houten has the basketball, Madison Ream. She gets around her, shot up, no good, rebound, Sturba. Sturba finds Madison, Madison finds Smith. Smith gets it over the timeline with 1.33 to go. Swing it over to Madison, that's opposite side of the floor she's been hot from. Smith's going to take one from just inside the arc. Count. Boy, everybody's throwing them in tonight. <laughs> Counted that as a three, Bob, believe it or not. They're red hot, Kenny, aren't yep. they? 42-18 your score with a buck 15 to go. Ron goes with the basketball and throws it out of bounds to Heather Nellum, who was actually checking into the ball game. Part of the Canterbury's problem, that is their eighth turnover, and they also have ten fouls. So between doing a lot of fouling and uh, turnovers, it's really <laughs> been uh, a big problem for Canterbury's why they're down 42-18. to 18. 106 and counting. They swing the ball to the left side. Caitlin Ryan has it, dumps it down on the inside to Rose Tipman. Rose has to bring it back out, throw it over the top. Nellum with a shot inside the arc. Nope, outside the arc, count it for three. Kenny, it doesn't make any difference who they put in. It's raining threes again here at Bishop Dwenger. And the, the unique thing is they're going in. Van Hooten tries to do everything. Finally decided to give it up. They almost threw it out over the timeline. Quickly over to Rongos. Rongos going to try and drive the lane. She stops, flings to the left side, three on the way, count it. For Canterbury, Habig. That's her third three. She, uh, Alexa Habig has hit three of them tonight. 45-21 your score, and I think they're going to hold for one shot as we got 22 seconds to go in counting. And Smith brings it back, and you can hear Coach Ng say all the way out. Slings it over to the right side, back to Smith. Kayla Ryan and her playing a little pitch and catch. Helen Ellum back to Smith. Now we're in, within nine seconds, we're going to go. Takes off, gets inside the lane. Uh, two and a half steps to put it up and in. Not the prettiest thing, but effective. 47 21 your score. And a half court shot by Van Hooten. It comes up way short, and we are at halftime. 47 21 your score. And we will go to our halftime show. You are listening to 106.3 FM WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Welcome home to your family of faith. Redeemer Radio gladly thanks Dr. Mark Stoner, a St. Jude parishioner, for underwriting a portion of our programming. Dr. Mark Stoner offers comprehensive dentistry for every family member. Dr. Stoner is now accepting new patients at his new location, 9830 Auburn Road. For more information on services for all dental needs, Dr. Stoner can be found on the web at markstonerdds.com or reached by phone at 260-484-4181. 
This is Jason Shifley, principal of Bishop Bringer High School. Students enter our school as children and emerge as adults, prepared to go out into the world with the tools necessary to become citizens of two worlds. Our enriched curriculum focuses on academics, service to the community, and participation in extracurricular activities, all while building on the foundation of our Catholic faith. Tuffy, our saintly mascot, reminds us that we are all called to be saints. Call us at 260-496-4700 or visit us online at bishopbringer.com to find out how you can become a Dwinger Saint. Think of Briscoe Dentistry for your family's dental care. Dr. Todd Briscoe and team know that your body is more than just teeth and gums. Your oral health affects the performance ability of your entire body. And on the field or court, you want your body to perform at its best. So trust Dr. Briscoe and team to provide the ultimate in preventative, periodontal, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry. To optimize your body's performance, contact Dr. Briscoe at 260-486-9950 or on the web at briscoedentistry.com. Want low mortgage payments? With mortgage rates still near historic lows, now may be the right time to purchase the home of your dreams or refinance your current one. This is Dan Fivecoat from First Federal Bank. I will work with you one-on-one to find the perfect financing solution for you. After all, we're better together. Contact me, Dan Fivecoat, at 260-489-4621 or visit us on the web at first-fed.com for more information. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Back at Bishop Dornier High School where the Lady Saints enjoy a comfortable 47-21 lead. And our halftime sponsor is... Historic St. Felix Catholic Center is open for retreats. Located in Huntington, Indiana on 30 cynic acres with plenty of recreational areas and Celine Blessed Mother Grotto. St. Felix Center is the perfect location for a single day of prayer for overnight retreats. Former home of the Venerable Salonis Casey, come visit today. Plan your visit at stfrancisatapiccenter.com. Thank you, Rich. Well, Bob, 47-21 is a score that we don't think we expected that big of a gap. I thought the uh, Lady Saints would uh, have a pretty good ball game, but wow, we that's a big spread for halftime. As we mentioned before the game, Canterbury uh, statistically is averaging 50 points a game, and Kenny, they have 21 at halftime, but they only had five in the first quarter. And for Canterbury, out of their eight baskets, four of them are threes. So they're having trouble uh, all over the floor. Bishop Dwenger had 18 points in the first quarter. And uh, sort of their their comment or their thing is you you haven't seen anything yet. They scored 29 points in the second quarter. They're averaging almost 60 points a game, and they scored 29 in the second quarter. And out of their 17 baskets, five of them are threes. So it's been raining threes for Dwenger as it is just easy baskets all night. Yeah, easy on the inside, and the threes are going in. These girls are shooting with confidence. Madison hit three from the right wing over here, all of them from the exact same little green on the floor. I mean, it, they, they get it to her, and nobody's charging out there, so it's an easy, easy look for uh, Ty Andrews. I'm sure she's got the, a handful of points, probably 12, 13 points. She's having her way both inside and out, and uh, everything the Saints throw up right now, it's just the, the hoop is as big as the ocean. And what has to be impressive, uh, as Kenny just mentioned, with Bishop Dwenger's scoring, they have three girls in double figures. You figure Taya Andrews, she's got 15, and Ellen Ross is 11, but Madison Ream is 10. So if Dwenger can get balanced scoring like that, they're going to be tough all year, and Josie copeland has got to have four or five blocks. She's playing really well defensively. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because every time the, uh, the Van Hoot girl goes in within about five or six feet of the basket on the right side. Josie's just there. She doesn't have to do anything special. And somebody has talked to her about how to block a shot and not catch a foul because she's done it three times, I think, without fouling. And the fourth time, uh, probably should have got a foul call when they didn't. She's knocked it down twice. And I don't know if that's a little bit of drama on Mason's part or uh, the physical contact is there because we've got the angle we have. At that end of the floor, you really can't tell, and it's both on the right side, so it's on the opposite side of where we're at, too. So I have a hunch, Kenny, Mason Van Houten's going to see uh, Josie Kochman in her dreams all night because every time uh, Mason Van Houten, 5'8", junior, she's a sharpshooter for Canterbury. She's the glue of uh, the Canterbury girls' basketball team this year. And Bishop Dwenger, everywhere she goes, they're not double-teaming her. They're triple, and, I mean, they're putting everyone on her except the kitchen sink. And she's working for every point. She's got to be one tired girl. And Dwinger's defense is excellent so far. They're doing a good job. But don't count the Cavaliers out. I watched Iowa and Purdue here about a week ago. And Purdue, one of the better teams in the country, 
gave up a 19-point lead and ended up losing the game on their home floor. And then I got a little bit nervous when I watched IU and Ohio State the other day when IU had a 30-point lead and it dwindled down to about 16 before they decided to step on the gas again. So you never know what's going to happen, and we're going to bring you all the action in the second half. But if you can hear this game, it's thanks to our communication sponsor, Dr. Todd and Mrs. Mary Briscoe and the Briscoe Family Dentistry. Their generous financial support helps make this Redeemer Radio Sport broadcast possible. Need emergency dental care? Call Dr. Briscoe at 486 9950. 486 9950. Let's take another two minute break and we'll put Bob's coach's hat on. You're listening to 106.3 FM, WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Programming on Redeemer Radio is underwritten in part by Bob Busher Homes. Floor plan customization is what they specialize in. Find floor plans, building sites, and read Bob's story on the web at bobbusherhomes.com. Bob Busher Homes is locally owned with offices in Fort Wayne and Angola. For more information about new home building or remodeling, Bob Busher Homes can be reached at 260-490-3355. A clean office space, okay, that's an easy choice, and choosing the right company to clean your business is easy too. Siocas Professional Cleaning is the choice of a lot of Fort Wayne companies because of the 100% satisfaction guarantee. Siocas does it with built-in check systems to make sure your business is cleaned beyond your expectations every time. First impressions are critical, so make sure yours is always the best with professional cleaning from Siocas. The best people, the best service. 483-2112 or online at siocas.com. Spherion Staffing, locally owned by the Pentenberg family, excels in finding the best candidates for industrial, clerical, customer service, non-clinical health care, IT, and professional direct hire placements. Spherion clients are accustomed to getting the right employees at the right time, every time. Spherion Staffing supports the proud excellence of the Dwinger Saints and the Lures Knights, both on the field and in the classroom. Whether you are seeking your next career move or searching for great employees, call us at 260-496-9900 or visit us on the web at spherion.com slash ftwayne. Hi, sports fans, Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the Barbershop Experience. St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maplecrest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. Welcome back to Bishop Boinger High School. We've got about a minute and a half on the clock, so we're going to get right to Bob. Bob, your name is now Coach Beckman for the Fort Wayne Canterbury Cavaliers. You're down a whole bunch. You had a better second quarter. What's your halftime advice? As you mentioned, they are down a whole bunch. They had nine turnovers. They got to work on on uh, not having so many turnovers. They did an awful lot of fouling. Their biggest problem on defense is Kenny. They're they're giving up too many rebounds to Bishop Boinger given up too many shots and even though on offense even though mason van houten is such a good player they are working so hard on her it looks when she passes the ball the girls are wide open so maybe she has to become a passer tonight instead of a scorer because they're concentrating so much on her and they're leaving the rest of the girls wide open you got 45 seconds to uh tell me what cleveland ing said in the locker room uh I hope you have a, a good day of school tomorrow because everything is going great for Bishop Dwinger. The biggest thing he's got to be on him is you look at the score and it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, coaches love to do that. This is the second half. As you mentioned, uh, whatever you did the first half is out the window. Bishop Dwinger is playing great team ball. They're playing great defense. Uh, Josie Kochman in particular, they're just doing everything tonight. But they have to forget about what the score is, go back to just playing hard and doing the little things that Coach Inge wants, and this should be a, a good victory for Dwenger tonight if they uh, respond to the coach. Did you notice that referee looks like Curtis Smith? <laughs> I should ask you what the weather is yeah, going to no be. Kidding. Hubcap Express is our third quarter sponsor. They are the expert in road flat tires and plus size fitment. Need your tires straightened? The Hubcap Express fixes bent wheels. For all your tire needs, visit Hubcap Express. They hang out at 606 West Coliseum Boulevard and on the web at hubcapexpress.com. Canterbury with the first possession of the second half. Got it into the right corner. Rorick, right toe, maybe a foot just north of it. Hands it off to Rongos. Rongos looking for somebody to give it up to. They got three Canterbury players that can hold hands. They finally spread out. 
shot on the way. Way short. Another rebound. block by way Kolkman. Short. And Kolkman had a hand on that one. And Andrews comes out of the pack with it. And she zips down the floor. Nice bounce pass over to Reem. Reem puts it up. Oh, hits the side of the backboard. Ross, rebound, throws it up. She's hit from behind. And the bucket counts. Ellen Ross says, look what I found, Kenny. Yeah, Sydney Hearn out of control. Trying to get down the floor quickly. And she just crashed right into Ross. Ross was, oh, I don't know, 40% horizontal when she threw that thing up. Ellen Ross has 13 points, 5 out of 5 from the foul line. Now 14 points and 6 out of 6 from the foul line. I was going to give you the devil if uh, she missed that one. The way they're playing tonight, I don't know if they're going to miss much. Yeah, not from the free throw line anyway, doing well. Van Hooten with a basketball guarded closely by Madison Reeves. Tries to take the pick. Madison fights right through it and just stays right inside her jersey. Finally hands it off to Hearn. Hearn. Goes to the left side, hit from the basketball, kind of nice. Dribble between her legs, changes hands, dribbles with a head up. Tries to throw a pass to Rongos on the baseline. Colton slaps it away. It get, it's loose. Roar gets it. She finds Habig down in the corner. She gives it up. No, she's still got it. Slowly dribbling it around, and she gets it out to Van Hooten. She's out in between the circles. And this time, Reem has picked off a solid pick. Van Hooten good puts pick. it up and in. Yeah, she's a very think, good shooter. I don't see, I don't think Reem saw Rorick that time. You've been fighting through that pick the whole time. 50-23 your score, and Claudia Ream with the basketball gets it to Ross. Ross spins where there's nobody, puts it up. Oh, it was so open, she missed it. Rebound, Kalkman missed it. Rebound, Ross bounces around and falls through. A very poor job again of rebounding by uh, Canterbury. That's been a problem all night. Or a very good job by Bishop Dwinger, which is, we'll put that uh, onus on them. 52-23 your score. And Hooten with the basketball. Stops, pops about a 12-footer mid-range jumper. No good. Rebound tipped around. Colkman comes out of the pack with it. Hands it to Ream. Ream gets it up the floor and looks for somebody to give it up to. Gives it up to Ross. 16-footer just outside the left toe. No good. Rebound Hearn. She hands it off to Van Hooten. Van Hooten looks. She's got the Dwinger with their backs to her, but she decides to pull it out. Jack up a three. Hits the front of the iron. Comes almost straight down. Andrews pulls the rebound down. She buzzes by two defenders. Going to get by everybody, puts it up, and too hard. Ross rebound. She is fouled by Rorick. So Ross will get two free throws with 537 here in the third quarter. Ellen Ross has seven rebounds. Taya Andrews has five rebounds for Dwenger already. <coughs> and I call the foul incorrect. That's going to go against Haby. Gets her third of the ball game in the second foul on Cavaliers this half. Seven for seven, I believe now. She's, we're not, not going to jinx her. No, he just, Bob just smiled at me. He's not going to say a word. I don't blame you. 53-23, your score. And Ellen Ross toes the line. It flies, and it's no good. Okay, I'll take credit for that one. Although and the smallest rebound. girl on the floor, Claudia Reem, uh, a lot of hustle. She gets the rebound. Snuck in there and, and rebounded. Get it into Sturba to Reem. Claudia, she's going to jack up a three. No good. Goes to the right side. Van Hooten comes down with a rebound. She's got one to beat. It happens to be Ross. Ross intimidator. So she backs Boy, up. Boy, she's a very good shooter. And the 15-footer and put it in. And I think the coaching staff got to her and said, quit going to the iron so much. Maybe that mid-range jumper is not a bad thing. Dwenger puts up a wild shot. No good. Van Hooten comes out of it with a rebound. She's going to back up. Now drive to the baseline, greeted by a whole lot of white uniforms. They're slinging around the shell. Three on the way, count it. She's smooth when she gets the feet underneath her. That's Alexa Habig. She's got four of them, Kenny. Four threes this game. 53-28. They throw it over the top of Sturba. Sturba has to lost control of it. They get it to Ross. Left toe, shot up, and good. Bob oh, for pencil sharp because everybody's putting everything in here so She has far. 19 points. Stolen by Reem. Claudia tries to bounce pass. Kicked out of bounds. That's probably the best defensive play they could have made on that situation. Because they give it a boot into the stands. And we're going to get a timeout. It looks like here. Canterbury calls time. So we're going to take ourselves a break too. And I'll tell you how long here as soon as the referee tells me how long. Let's just take a 30-second break. You're listening to 106.3 FM WRDF. Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Welcome home. Not a second to spare. At First Federal Bank, we know that's how you feel when running your business. You need banking solutions that make the most of your precious time. We offer tailored solutions to help you manage your cash flow and services designed to streamline your paperwork, all with your time in mind. Call me, Tracy Bodan, at 260-432-0022 to learn how you can feel like you have a personal bookkeeper working for you around the clock or visit first-fed.com. First Federal Bank, better together. 
member FDIC, equal housing lender. And we're back at uh, Fish and Plunger High School. I shouldn't give you a duh there. We've been there all night, haven't we, Bob? Yes, we <laughs> have. And uh, it's uh, raining threes and uh, buckets for Fish and Plunger. Again, we mentioned they already have 55 points and they average 59.5. And it's the Ellen Ross show. She has 19 points. Uh, just having a, having a great ball game right now. Having a real solid third quarter. We jinxed her on the last free throw, but she's uh, everything she's putting up uh, is fine and iron and nets here. She's doing a nice job here in the third quarter. So the Saints have the basketball underneath their own hoop as Claudia Ream checks it, takes it out, gets it to Andrews. Andrews drives, dish, puts it up. Three shot, no good. Sturba with the miss. They get it forward to Van Hooten. She's got one to beat. She decides to back it out, jacks up a three. Ooh, that's going to be wide left from the angle we got. And guess who hustles and gets the rebound? Claudia Ream again. Turned into a rebounding machine. To get it down the floor quickly. Andrews to Ross. Ross, 17-footer, short. Rebound Sturba. That's her third rebound, Kenny Olivia Sturba. <coughs> Excuse me. Get on inside to Andrews, and Andrews has got a big old heave-ho from Rongos. And they will call the foul on her. That's her third of the ball game. And the third foul called against the Cavaliers. I think they might call that on Ellen Ross an illegal pick. You're exactly right. They had the ball was flying in the air and they blew the whistle. You know, Ellen Ross set kind of a mean little illegal pick. So the Canterbury has the basketball back. Van Hooten at the top of the key. Tries to go to the right side, also trying to make some room with her off arm. And they're going to call that on Reem. Although Van Hooten was doing the pushing, Reem was the. Uh, Object of the push, but they called that on Reem. Their first of the ball game, second foul called against. What a move. The Bishop Saints. Van Hooten Man. with an up and under move that you don't see in girls basketball very often. She had 10 points, and you can tell she's a scorer. She just isn't getting a lot of help right now. 55 30 the score. Andrews, head fake, kicks it to the right side. Whistle stops play. There's going to be a hand check. You sure that's not Curtis Smith? My gosh, it looks like he's got a twin brother refereeing around town but it's, here. And all of a sudden, Kenny, it seems like they're calling every foul here, which uh, is fine, but we had a pretty good first half, and uh, now there's a lot of fouls in the last uh, minute here. A couple of changes in the lineup for Dwinger. We'll get them on the fly here for you. Madison Ream to Jayla Smith. It's over to Andrews. Andrews flies the three. It's no good. Rebound comes down to Cavaliers. Van Hooten. And she loses the basketball out of bounds as she's looking for some zebra to give her the benefit of the doubt of a foul, and they're not going to get it. She's working her tail off tonight. She's a, a great ball player. She just can't do it by herself tonight. Madison Ream triggers the basketball in over to Jada Smith. Jada slowly dribbles over to the right side. Goes to her left, spin move, gets inside the lane, kicks it out for a three. Madison throws up a three off the iron, goes high. No, Rorick with a rebound for Cavaliers. Bounce pass to Rongos. Rongos heading to the center of the floor, exactly what you do when you're running the floor like that. Three on the way from the left side, it's no good. Copeland with a rebound. Copeland finds Smith, and Smith's going to bring it over the timeline right side. Head up looking for somebody. Everybody heads for the baseline now. Oh, go to, to Sturba. Sturba, baseline jumper, look good. Come up short, Rongos with a rebound. Gets to Van Hooten. Van Hooten almost got a pocket pick to the backside. Didn't bother her a bit. She backs up. That's on line. Just comes up a little bit short. Cookman with a rebound. She hands it off to Andrews. Andrews, oh, gets by a nice bunch pass. of defenders. They are dying to get her a bucket, and they absolutely do this time. Sturba. Olivia Sturba. And that's about her third or fourth attempt at it. But she finally got a really good look. And whistle will stop play, and they got a full timeout. So let's take a one minute break ourselves. You're listening to 106.3 FM WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Tri State Warehousing is one of the most complete service oriented companies in the warehousing field today. Located in Fort Wayne, Tri State Warehousing is a 50,000 square foot dry and temperature controlled storage facility, serving two thirds of the continental U.S. with overnight rail service. The dedicated staff and specialty services of Tri State Warehousing are known throughout the industry. For great things in store, call Tri State Warehousing, 260 436 2010. That's 260 436 2010. We're all searching, searching for answers, searching for meaning in our life. But the world and the culture give us empty solutions and empty promises. We know there is more to life because we're searching for the real truth and a real meaning. 
you can stop searching because you found Jesus Christ and his Catholic Church. Redeemer Radio, welcome home to your family of faith. High school. Hope you didn't hear that snap and clap because I, I just, that's what we do in radio instead of a light bulb going off in our head. We make funny noises with our hands and stuff. 236 here, third quarter action. 57 30, the Saints on top by 27. And the Cavaliers bring the basketball up. Rongos to the right side. To Habig. Habig finds a dry, or cutting Van Hooten down the lane. No good. A rebound fought for. And Rose Turpin looks like she tied him up. And she absolutely did. Good hustle by Rose Tipman. She's getting some good playing time. 5'6", senior from St. Charles. Very aggressive on that rebound, Kenny. Brittany James come down with a rebound, and Rose just grabbed it and said, I want this back. Smith goes in amongst the trees, puts it up, blocked. Rose, rebound, gets it back out to Andrews. Andrews stops, pops the 12-footer, left side, no good. Rebound, tip, tip, and run down by Rongo to Canterbury. She's looking for somebody to help her. Nobody's there, so Andrews helped her, took the ball away from her. Three on one, let's see how we handle it as the Saints. Andrews takes it herself, puts it up and in. Had one defender, and Cleveland Ng calls timeout with 1.55 here in the third quarter. 59-30 your score, and we will just stay right here, Bob. That was a, a quick little section of play where the Saints, again, got a couple buckets. 19 points for Ellen Ross, 17 for Taya Andrews. Those two young ladies have 36 points. Canterbury has 30 all night long. So Ross of 19, Andrews of 17, and Madison Ream with 10. Canterbury is led by Mason Van Houten with 10 points. And out, Alexa Habig, she's the leading scorer, Kenny. She's got four three. She had three in the second quarter. They've held her to one. But, uh, again, Canterbury had 21 points in that second quarter, or 16 points in the second quarter, and they only have nine here in the third quarter. They trigger the basketball into Rongos. Rongos just now gets over the timeline, but so does half the crew. Because everybody's just kind of floating down there. Now. No real big hustle to get down there at the time. Get it Van Houten. Van Houten spins. Shoots one from the foul line. It's no good. Nice rebound. rebound. James puts it up. Too strong. Rebound to Rose Tipman. That's, her, that's her second rebound already. Finds Andrews. Andrews one-on-one -on -one with Van Houten. Puts it up and in. Van Houten did not want to challenge her on the defensive side of the play. Canterbury triggers it into Habig. Habig, she can jack up the three if she gets the good look. Still has the basketball guarded by Smith. She finds Rongos. Rongos is greeted by Ross on the defensive side of the ball. Ross stuck, stuck her hand in the air. She said, oh, I'm not going anywhere with it. Madison Reed just picked the pocket of Van Hooten, and she throws it ahead to Ross. Ross gets a handle on it, sort of, loses it, gets it back, kicks to Smith. Smith, three on the way, count it. 64-30, and everything's going the Saints way. Jada Smith did not start. She's usually a starter. She's only a freshman and Kenny for not starting. She has four baskets. Two of them are threes and she has ten points off the bench. Madison Ream just got called for her fourth foul of the ball game. She was trying to disrupt the inbounds pass and hung on to Van Hooten a little bit too long and that got the call. So the Saints again with a little bit of full court pressure trying to badger Van Hooten into a turnover and this time they tripped her. They're going to call it a block, but it's more like a trip. But Natalie Maurer got uh, her feet crossed up. That right. is the fourth foul of the ball game. Excuse me, of the half for Bishop Dwinger. And they quickly trigger it back into Van Houten. And Van Houten dribbles it off her own foot. She's got to pick it up and find somebody. She finds Rongos. Rongos heads for the baseline. Cut off by Ross. So she's going to try the other way. Now she's the left toe. Heads for the baseline again. Stops. Picks up the basketball. Hands it off to Habig. Habig could put it up from there, but she's just not going to do it, apparently. She had a decent little look. Tries to get it to Van Houten. It's tipped away. Back to Habig. Ron goes inside to James. James, well, nice move. Puts it up. Missed the shot. Fouled on the way in. So, Brittany James get a couple free throws for her effort. She's come off the bench, and she's really working hard, especially on the offensive and defensive boards. That personal foul was called against Josie Kolkman. And with all the work she's done on the inside, that's only her first personal foul of the ball game. Free throw bounces around and falls through. So 64-31 your score. Brittany James is a 5'11 sophomore, good looking athlete. Puts up the second free throw and that is much more comfortable, goes right through. 
22 seconds left here in the third period. And uh, Cleveland says, uh, let's go for one. 15 seconds. And Smith drives, dishes to Andrews. Andrews backs it out, looks up the clock for within eight seconds. Now hands it off to Smith. Six seconds, they better get it going or they're not going to get anything out of this. And Smith drives into the trees, puts it up way over everything. Van Houten rebound, bubble sound. That ends three. 64 32, your score. And we are. <coughs> excuse me. Listen, you were listening to, and we are broadcasting 106.3 FM, WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Welcome home to your family of faith. There's a new dining experience in Fort Wayne, just waiting to be discovered by sports fans everywhere. Newly remodeled, The Lodge, located in the Coyote Creek Golf Club, is open to the public, offering great daily lunch and dinner specials. Bring the family in to enjoy our spacious family room after the game. The Lodge is proud to support Bishop Dwanger and Bishop Lures football. Come celebrate the W's with their friendly staff. The Lodge is located at 4935 Hillegas Road. To save your table for after the game, call 260-203-3154. We're back with fourth quarter action, forthcoming, 64-32 to score. And our fourth quarter sponsor is? Help support your Catholic parish or school. Help yourself in the process with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. Call Elevate at 844-230-6611 or visit them online at NordameElevate.com to learn more. Thank you, Rich. And it looks like... Uh, the A players are still going to be on the floor with the exception of one for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. They're back to uh, Jada Smith is out there. She didn't start. Natalie Mowry is uh, on the floor. Well, Jada's been starting a lot, so I think she's part of the, the, uh, the first lineup normally. Van Hooten with the basketball. They finally give it up to somebody I haven't seen on the floor yet, Megan Thomas. Thomas hands it off to Hearn. Hearn to Rongos. Rongos to Habig. Habig throws up the kind of a one-handed floater that uh, goes in. She actually did something weird, Kenny. She's got four baskets, and that's the first basket she has. It wasn't a three. Yeah, that was a, actually a nice little shot from the right toe. <laughs> Smith throws one to Andrews. Andrews wasn't looking. Hit her in the side of the head. She recovered it, gets it inside to Josie Coakman, and Coakman is pushed pretty firmly that time. I think by Megan Thomas. We'll get the uh, official call. Bishop Dwenger outscored Canterbury 17 to 11 that quarter, and that's why they have a 64 to 34 lead. <laughs> Andrews three from the right side. It goes long. A rebound Thomas for Canterbury. He finds Van Hooten, and Van Hooten tries to get uh, inside. And Natalie Mowry has drawn the assignment, and she is badgering her, and she banged her too. I don't know if they're going to call that on Ross or Mowry. Yep, on Mowry. Mowry is. Uh, Hustling hard, but I don't think she has quite the foot speed to keep up with Van Hooten. That's her second foul of the ball game. Six now called on the Bishop Gwinner Saints this half. Long inbounds pass to Van Hooten. She stops, pops, about a 17-footer left side, only goes 16 feet, hits the front of the iron. Ross with a rebound. She finds Andrews is not let Andrews finds Coakman running on the nice right side pass. of the floor, up and in. Josie Coakman got rewarded for running the floor that time. Absolutely. Van Hooten with the basketball tries to split between Andrews and Maurer. Andrews took the basketball away. Van Hooten hits the floor. Andrews gets through two defenders. Somebody get caught on the reach in. Probably wrong goes. Yeah, hey, got that one right. As Elena Rongo still leads the person to file the freshman for Canterbury, her fifth of the ball game, so she's going to be done. For today, she had a, a three in the second quarter. Good looking freshman. She works very, very hard. And uh, next three years, she should be a very good player for Canterbury. Coach Only Beck a freshman. Coach Beckman looks down the bench and picks a junior, Ganesha Robinson, a five foot three junior, to take her place. Well, Natalie Maurer going to trigger the basketball in. Ah, pretty good defense that time. They find Sturba down on the baseline. Tries to get to Smith. And the, the defense disrupts and Smith finally gets it. Another Coakman, nice pass Coakman to Josie Coakman. And in. So despite some pretty good defense by Robinson that time, the Swains Saints stuck with the play and got another bucket. 68-34 your score. Van Hooten again trying to do everything. And I think Bob and I are exactly right. You just can't do it all on your own here. They get it to Hearn inside to Havig. Havig puts that same floater up a little bit shorter. Robinson pulls out the rebound. Hearn thinks about loading it up. Goes inside the arc, puts it up, hits the iron twice, goes high. She gets her own rebound. Coakman goes over to the blocker. I think Josie got called on the foul. We'll see here. 
That should be seven uh, on the team, I think. You're exactly right. And the second one on Josie Colkman. Heather Nellum is going to check back to the lineup here shortly for the Bishop Dwinger Saints as Sidney Hearn, first first free throw, rattles around and drops through. 68-35, your score, 6-14 on the clock. Sidney Hearn is one out of two from the foul line, has five points, and she's a real hustler for Canterbury. She's only a sophomore. They're a very young team. They only have two seniors on the whole squad. Natalie Bowery and Jada Smith take a seat for the Saints. So, quickly, Claudia Ream going to get it up the floor on Robinson. Yeah, she better be careful or dance around that 10-second line. She does get it over cleanly. Hands it to Nellum. Nellum finds Andrews. Andrews is at the top of the key. Goes over to Sturba. Sturba left wing. Back to Andrews at the top of the key. They're thinking about going to the right side. The defense got in the way. So they get it down to Nice Kochman. pass from Kochman. Kochman. Dumps one down to the baseline. Shot no good. Rebound. Sturba up and in. Claudia Reem put a little dinker up there and it just bounced around off the rim. It didn't quite get there, but they ran the play well. Van Hooten, three on the way. Who hits the range finder? Hits nothing. Kochman and... Hearn, I believe, battling for the rebound. And they're going to call a foul on the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Uh, Olivia Sturba got her from the backside. So the Cavaliers with 537 on the clock go step up to the free throw line and miss the first one. She's three out of uh, five from the foul line. Sydney Hearn, she's done a good job of rebounding. She has six or seven rebounds. Joseph Kochman down, Ellen Roth up. Taya Andrews going to have a seat for now, and Caitlin Ryan going to take her place. So it's 537, and have come from the lead. Coach Ng spreading out the playing time a little bit. We might not see too much more of Taya Andrews the rest of the night. Second free throw is off the back of the iron. Sturba, nice rebound there. Got her body in easy position, which she didn't have to work too hard to go get it. Kenny, she has five, po- five rebounds off the bench and four points. Claudia Reem. Trying to get in, but split the defense. Didn't work too well. She just hands it off to Ross. Ross is going to be at the top of the key. Looks around. Finds Sturber down on the baseline. Sturber up. Ooh, way too hard. Rebound Canterbury. And she is, Van Hooten is bumped by Sturber, who is trying to follow her shot with a little frustration. Got into Van Hooten with a hip. So at 5-16, 70-36 your score. This game's pretty well in hand for the Saints. As quiet as this gym is, you might have heard uh, Coach Cleveland Inge told his girls quit fouling. They already have nine fouls, and that's the only thing that he's probably a little disappointed in is they're uh, fouling a little too much. they got to move their feet and play better defense. Van Hooten misses the front end of a one-on-one. Hand- Canterbury out hustles Bishop Winger to get the rebound. It got loosened on the floor. Hearn makes a curl move, goes in, and shot no good. Couple bodies hit the floor. Caitlin Ryan's going to be guilty of that personal foul. She kind of got in the way and kind of didn't. And that always results in a foul. Sydney Hearn back to the free throw line. She's a left hander, puts it up, hits the front of the iron, missed it. Rose Tippman going to be back in the lineup, replacing Olivia Sturba. Sydney Hearn, three out of six from the foul line. And they finally get the ball back to her after everybody shuffles up and down the defensive rebounding lines. And she puts it up and in. So we're at five minutes to go here, 70-34. Saints with a comfortable lead. Claudia Ream. Bounce nice. pass inside the Rose. The Rose got tied up as the pass was a little bit low, so everybody got a hand on it. Claudia Ream seems like a water bug out there, Kenny, for Bishop Dwenger. Five five foot sophomore and she's everywhere. She's awful quick. Yeah, she, yeah. being a sophomore, we're going to see her for the next couple of years because she looks pretty comfortable. Rose inside the lane. Oh, a little bit hard. Rebound Nellum's no good. Rebound Ross up and in. Oh, more Windex work, as Dick Vitale would say, by the Bishop Dwinger Saints. That's 21 points for Ellen Ross and a ton of rebounds. Van Hooten drives the baseline cut off. She has to kick it out to the, to the far corner. They ended up giving it up to Robinson. She's at the top of the key. They throw it in the corner again. Thomas drives the baseline. No place to go with it. Now she's tied up Ross, and Pittman got her in trouble, and the jump ball is called. I'm standing in the exact bad place to see which way the arrow is going. And the arrow stays the direction of Canterbury. Trying to get a cheapie, and oh, nice hands by the defense that time. 
The Bishop Dwinger Saints, Heather Nellum, got in there and slapped it out of bounds, so they're going to try it again. Heather Nellum, 5'7", juniors, doing a very good job defensively on Van, Ho Van Houten. Van Houten has the ball, tries a crossover dribble, didn't fool Nellums any. When she did get around, the help came around. Rose Tippman helped defense and a rebound. It looks like uh, the way you draw it up on the chalkboard. Give it to Ross. Ross kicks it to the right side. Three on the way, hard off the back of the iron. No good as Ryan put one up and didn't have enough rain in her. Didn't have enough air underneath, excuse me. Didn't bring enough rain. They get it to Van Houten. She finally makes a nice cut down the lane. And that's the way you're supposed to do it. She is always moving, out. Kenny. That's why she's such a good ball player. She's never standing still. She's very hard to guard. She's on the move all the time. 72-39, your score with 3.39 to go. Nellens with the basketball at the top of the key. Throws it over to Ryan. Ryan finds Ross deep in the corner. She decides not to do anything with it. And throwing it all the way around the shells. Rose Tipman was at the top of the key. They get it to Ross. She's at the top of the key. That come up short. And Van Houten pulls down the rebound. And she splits two. She's going to try and take it all the way. That determined look on her face puts it up. No good. Rebound Nellums. Nellums finds Claudia Ream. <laughs> her pocket gets picked, but Nellums happens to be hanging out behind her. But she picked it up, got it to Ross. Ross to Rose Tipman. Rose travels with the basketball. She was just in a little too much of a hurry. When you yep. don't get a play a lot, you're in a little hurry. But I tell you, Bishop Dwinger's second group, they've done a nice job with uh, Jada Smith and Heller Nellums and Natalie Mallory and Olivia Sturva. Olivia Sturva has four points and a ton of rebounds. And Dwinger's second unit's done a real good job tonight. 72-39, and the Coach Ng made wholesale changes, got five new bodies on the floor. Three minutes to go. The Saints got this one. going to be in the W column, I'm pretty sure. Van Houten with the basketball. Tries to go around the horn. She loses control of it. And Andrews steps in the passing lane, but Robinson finds a loose ball. They get it to the right side. Three on the way. No good by her or Habig. She's hit a few from there. And Madison Reed comes out of the pack with a basketball. She's back into the ballgame along with Jada Smith. Jada tries to go around Robinson. Robinson's good. Quick afoot. Around the shell, they throw it. Smith's got it in the left corner. She's thinking about it, but she decided not to. Sturba, Andrews. Colton Good ball movement by Bishop Dwinger. Outside the shell. Andrews fires one through Smith's hand. Smith goes back and gets it. Recovers. They're going to reset the offense. She backs up into the corner. Ooh, nice crossover dribble. Left Robinson in her shoes, so she decides to go all the way in. There's enough blue jerseys in there. That didn't work. Van Houten's got two to beat. Madison Reed picks her pocket. Canterbury picks it up. Finds Van Houten again. She drives, puts it up and in. 72-41, your score. We're just inside of two minutes to go in the end of the fourth quarter in regulation here. Shot no good. A rebound fought for. <laughs> Madison Ream steals it out of somebody's hand. Puts it up. No good. Andrews has the rebound. Has to fight off with an off arm. Finds Josie Cook. Wow, they're letting them up. play now. That's way short. Yes, they certainly are. And Sydney Hearn comes out of the pack with the basketball. She's going to go up and in. And she is fouled on the way in, so they're going to count the basket. And Jada Smith going to be guilty of the personal foul. Ten points for Sydney Hearn, seven or eight rebounds. Sydney Hearn's doing a great job on uh, on the backboards. Five eight sophomore. She looks like she could be a good post player for uh, Canterbury the next couple of years. First free throws up and good. So that completes the three point play. One thirty six to go. Seventy two forty four. Your score in favor of the Bishop Dwinger Saints. It's been all night, the Saints had a pretty nice lead and they haven't given up at all. Pass stolen, forward to Ben Hooten, put it up and in. Nice steal by Sidney Hearn that time as the Saints got a little bit lazy with the pass going up the court. Ben Hooten had four points in the first quarter and she has 16 since halftime for a total of 20. Andrews has the rocks, he's gonna back up a little bit, go out in between the circles. Go to the left side to Madison Ream. Ream finds Sturba, she is way outside the arc. As an Andrews, they find a nice entry pass into Coltman as she made a nice cut through the lane, put it up and in. 74-46, your score. Van Hooten gets by everybody. Coltman oh, goes. what a foul there. Coltman says, hey, no, that ain't happening. But Coltman finally fouled her for the first time in five. If you come inside, it's not going to be easy, and uh, she let her know that one. So 51.4 and... The young lady who hasn't shot a lot of free throws tonight, Mason Van Houten to the free throw line, puts it up and in. Shift change again for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. I'm sure to finish out the last 51.4.
74-47 your score. And everybody figures out where they're going. Mason Van Houten, as Kenny said, as much as she's uh, mis misdued it all for uh, Canterbury, this is only her second free throw. And she missed the second one. It came straight down right into Caitlin Ryan's hands. And she finds Claudia Ream. Claudia with the basketball going to the left side. Now she changes direction, goes to the right side. Splits the defense and got her pocket picked by Robinson. Robinson gets it forward to Van Hooten. Van Hooten is going to try and take on Ross. And Ross is just too big of a specimen. So she goes the other direction, puts it up. No good. There's a foul on the play, but it's away from the ball and on the floor, I believe. They're going to call that foul on. Heather Nellum, her second of the ball game. And Miss Robinson going to get a crack at the free throw line. So, ooh, she'd bring some rain. And it's on the left side of the world because she missed everything. Still got another chance to get lined up. And the referee, I think, gave her a watch your toes warning there. Not getting in the lane a little bit prematurely. Second one was in the air. That one finds the mark. 74, 48, 30 seconds to go. Claudia Ream with the basketball, guarded by Robinson closely. She gets it over to Heather Nellums. Nellums to Ross, Ross to Ryan. Gregor's going to just Ryan be content, I think, Kenny, yep. to pass it around for the last right. 18 seconds. Throw it around the shell. Ross drives inside, kicks it back outside. Again, to Heather Nellums. And then to Rose Tippin, who's popped outside the arc. She's on the right side. She's going to back, back up and say, well, hang on to this because we've got about two seconds to go. And that is your ball game. Final score, 74-48. And we will take about a minute and a half break and come back with our post-game show. You are listening to 106.3 FM, WRDF, Columbia City, Fort Wayne. Welcome home to your family of faith. Shawnee Construction and Engineering is proud to support tonight's game. We specialize in commercial and industrial construction and use unique life cycle principles to provide our clients the highest quality craftsmanship for the life of the project. Shawnee Construction and Engineering are partners with you for lifetime savings. We can be found at ShawneeConstruction.com or at 260-489-1234. That's 260-489-1234. He has counted to infinity twice. He once set a land speed record on a surfboard. Bruce Springsteen calls him the boss. He is the most fascinating man alive. I don't always buy diamonds, but when I do, I prefer Peter Franklin Jewelers. Stay sparkly, my friend. Here's a money-saving tip from Momper, the number one name in insulation since 1956. Exposed attic ceiling joists and ductwork or new snow that quickly melts off your roof means you need to add insulation. We'll fill empty sidewall cavities with insulation, even through masonry, aluminum, or vinyl siding with no unsightly holes. Plus, we'll seal your crawl space with urethane foam for a total insulation package. Call Momper now for a free, no-obligation energy analysis of your home. And we're back at Bishop Winger High School for our post-game show. And here I am, not paying any attention. Our one travel sponsor, that's h &L Electric. They specialize in commercial electrical leads for your business community. h &L Electric can handle the smallest to the largest of projects for your business. Call Pete Henry, that guy right over there. See him? Oh, yeah, of course, we're on radio. 260-357-0123. That's 260-357-0123. And our post-game sponsor is Bishop Lewis High School, a Catholic educational community that instills in each student dignity and take the integrity, respect, and responsibility. You can catch the Lures spirit at www.bishoplures.org. The gym has gone silent again. It's not like a golf match, but we are blessed. We have Miss Ross. Ellen Ross has joined us here post Cape Bob. 5'11", sophomore. Ellen, an outstanding ball game. 21 points, and I gave up. Uh, you had a ton of rebounds. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank uh, you. I, I know... Uh, in the past, Canterbury has been one of the better teams in the area, and you guys are probably shooting for them tonight. You guys had 18 points in the first quarter and 29 in the second, 47 in the first half. What was your uh, your offensive output? You you know you you've scored uh, 59 points a game. 
but you had 47 at the half. You and Ty Andrews were just red hot. Yeah, well, we just executed our offense and moved the ball really well and worked as a team. It looked like the coach wanted you to really run a lot tonight. Was that the case or yeah. was it my imagination? He told us coming out of the locker room that we needed to run the floor. Well, you guys did a really nice job. I saw a lot of baseline passes, uh, and Joseph Kochman did a good job clogging up the middle on the defensive side of things. And uh, I'm just impressed with the way you guys played tonight. It was uh, quite interesting. Now, um, I lost my train of thought. Don't get old, Bob. That happens all the time. I was going to mention, and I know Madison Reams a very good little ball player, but when she gets 10 points, she does all the other things. But when she gets 10 points, that's got to add to you guys tonight. Yeah, it helps a lot. Her defense, especially shutting down Mason and just um, always executing. Now, did you find it any tough? Uh, I know with no school today, does that make it tougher for you guys? Do you like, I mean, you're not into a, a, a normal routine. Does that cause any problem at all? I mean, I'd say we're a little less focused, but once it's game time, you know, we all get focused, get our heads on straight. Well, you you could tell Coach uh, Mr. Shifley that you had 21 points. Maybe you need to miss <laughs> another day or two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sneaky, Bob. <laughs> hey, she did have 21 to... points. Well, that's true. <laughs> Skipping a day of school. I don't know about that. <laughs> now, you guys got off to what was a 10 nothing, 12 nothing start, a 19 to one, and so. 18. They had an 18 to five lead at the end of the quarter. <laughs> As a team, do you find you guys uh, want to take the foot off the gas pedal a little bit, or are you guys pretty much uh, of a good, solid mindset where you just keep going forward? I just say at times, you know, we'll step back because we get comfortable, but then we're always just pushing, pushing each other and telling each other, you know, you can't settle, you can't be comfortable, you know, always run the ball and stuff like that. Well, she did a, a, a fab fabulous job. You two, uh, you and Ty are playing very well, as the whole team is all year. I'm dying to ask you not to put you on the spot, but in just a little time that we have left, what's it like playing, having your father coach you? Is he always coached like in grade school or is this? Yeah, he's coached me since I was second, third grade. So I'm used to it, you know. Now, does he ever break out the, the old tapes, the old pictures and go, this was me at Notre Dame? <laughs> yeah, you ever, yeah. you hear, you probably love hearing those stories, <laughs> I huh? Hear, I hear that all the time, all the time. <laughs> Well, we think you do a fantastic job. You looked really comfortable at the free throw line tonight. Now, we didn't put the whammy on you until about the eighth free throw when you finally yeah. didn't get one to go through. And, and we're going to take credit for that because every time we brag about somebody, then it screws them up. So, <laughs> uh, that's probably, I think that was mine on that time. So. Well, the thing that's so impressive is you guys have probably won as many games this year as you won all last year. Yeah. You guys are improving every year under uh, – Coach Inge, and with the uh, sectionals coming, I know that's your emphasis. And you guys should have a, a a very good shot at the sectionals. It'll be very competitive, but people better watch out for Dwanger the last half of the year here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, we're going to let you get back to your girls and uh, enjoy the night. Ellen Ross, five foot eleven sophomore, had a great game for the Lady Saints at Bishop Dwanger High School. Thank and you Ellen, all. you'll have to tell your dad I'm an old guy. I remember watching him and his brother play. So uh, him and your uh, your dad and his brother at Northfield and then at Notre Dame. All right. Okay, thanks Congratulations. For us. Thank you. So, again, the Bishop Dwinger Saints come away with a pretty good ball game tonight. Pretty big win, 74-49 over the Cavaliers of Canterbury High School. Just a very good ball game, Kenny. Yep, certainly was. And the girls come out to play. They played well right out of the gate. Uh, got a little lazy in the middle. Uh, but, you know, that you're going to have a tendency to do that sometimes when you get a big lead and you're pretty comfortable with the team that uh, you're playing against. So. What's also impressive, four, four girls in double figures for Dwenger, uh, Ellen Ross with 21, 19 for Taya Andrews, 10 for uh, Jada Smith off the bench. He's usually a starter, and Madison Ream had 10. And, of course, to do everything, Mason Van Houten, Van Houten had 17 for Canterbury. But Canterbury, just uh, just not enough guns, and uh, I can see where they're just have it they're struggling this year but they got a lot of young kids and a good coaching staff and they'll get them back on track yeah and they get them back on track shortly because there, there's some girls that can shoot and girls can play and there's no substitute for playing time and sometimes you, there's years where you just got to kind of take it on the chin and, and learn from all that so we are going to get out of here shortly but you know what less than 24 hours we're going to be right back on the air right back in this gymnasium the bishop Dwinger boys take on the new haven bulldogs which should be a pretty good matchup the bulldogs are surprising some people this year uh don't have a lot of uh height but they certainly have been playing with some pretty good heart so we're going to call it a night tonight bob uh let's see yeah i think we got everything covered all our sponsors are in and we are going to go home it's cold Do you think it's 75 degrees out there somewhere 
Yeah, south of the equator somewhere, perhaps. In Florida, huh? Yeah, so we were gonna, we're going to take off. If you're in the car, thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate it. Tune in tomorrow night for the Bulldogs and the Saints. The guys hit the floor, and it's uh, game time scheduled for about 7.30. Bear with us because live is live, and you never really know exactly what time you're going to get on. God bless everybody. Stay warm. We'll go to closing prayer, and uh, thanks for listening. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card,